Yes, it's another update video. Version 23.1 is now available for download from your Adobe desktop app. And let me tell you, these updates are really exciting. A special thanks to Envato Elements for sponsoring today's episode. You can get 70% off your first month by using my link below. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. <laughs> So just two quick exciting updates here. One, I'm releasing a new Premiere Pro keyboard for editors. It's coming out early next year. You can go to premiergal.com keys to go join the waitlist. And I'm super excited to share this with you. The design is done and now it's on to printing. And two, I've joined Creator Now as a workshop host. So it's basically like a film school, but for YouTube. So it has all sorts of different classes from myself and from other creators that will help you become a better creator. And you can get 10% off your membership using my code PremierGal and the link is below. So the first update is the one that you've been waiting for. Adding animation to our captions. A lot of you commented on the last video, can we add transitions to the captions? Well, now we can do it and let me show you how it works. You can see here inside of my sequence, I have these captions for an Instagram reel that I created. Now, if you're not familiar with how to create captions, I'll link to a video up here that you can watch. Premiere Pro will auto generate this from you and you can actually click on the text here and it's time coded to your timeline and you can edit the transcript. And then from this little ellipsis, we can create captions from the transcript. And once you do that, you will have all of your captions here time coded out and it's here in the captioning track. And you can click on any one of these caption layers and from Essential Graphics, you can stylize it with these controls. That's nothing new. The one thing that we've been wanting to do is add animation to these layers. If we right click on the edge of this, you cannot apply default transitions. It's grayed out. So what you have to do is you have to convert it to a graphics layer from which you can add animation to. So what I recommend doing, especially if you need to export the captions as a .srt, you first wanna duplicate the captions as is. So to do that, you're gonna right click on this empty space here and click on add track and then press okay. And then click and select all of these captions, press the alt key or the option key on a Mac and drag it up. And now we have our duplicate. And this layer here, we can lasso and select it. And then you have to go to graphics and titles and upgrade caption to graphic. And look at that, it just turned that captions into graphic text layers here from which we can add animations to. So it's no longer on the captioning track, right? To add animation, you can go to effect controls and you can now keyframe the position and the scale to add animation. I actually use a plugin of transitions from Film Impact. And if I go over here to my effects and search for Film Impact Text Animator, I can drag this transition to the front of this clip here and now, they animate up on screen. So I'm gonna go through and add text animator at all these transition points really quickly. A few moments later. Here's a cool captioning hack that a lot of people don't know about. If you go up here to the essential graphics panel and go to text layer preferences. So using keyframing and transitions, you can now add movement to your captions. So that way they can be more dynamic for your Instagram reels or TikTok. And it doesn't have to be just a static subtitle that's just quite frankly, boring. And I hope in the future that we will also be able to have automated animations that animate directly to our voice so we don't have to do any animation at all. The next one is an update to masking that's seriously gonna make it so much less frustrating because this update to masking, it's so minor, but so important. And let me explain how it works. So I'm in version 22.6 right now, and this is the old masking tool. Let's say we wanted to mask out this phone to change just the color. What I would do is I would go up here to effect controls and go to the pen tool. And I would probably zoom in to about 100% here. And let's say we just start clicking and look at this rotation symbol. You kind of have to go ahead a little bit, but you don't get the precision that you want. Go ahead and that little rotation tool comes up and you start creating it. And let's say you accidentally click and rotate it. It's super frustrating, right? So now in version 23.1, not only do we have up to 400%, they also added 800% as well as 1600. So you can really get 
super zoomed in when you're creating a mask. So because I'm going to change the color of this phone, I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'm gonna press option, click and drag up. And I'll be creating the mask on this top layer because I just wanna isolate the color of the phone. So once again, I'm gonna use the pen tool and I'm going to start drawing the mask and I'm actually gonna go into 800% because over here we have these little outlets here, the little buttons on the side of the phone. And with the previous masking tool, we couldn't get this level of detail because if we would click here, the rotation symbol would come up and here I can just click and there's no rotation symbol. It's so much easier. So I finished the mask here. You can see this is the mask layer. In this case, let's say we wanted to change the color of the phone. So I could go to Lumetri Color and underneath the curves section, there's something called hue versus hue. You can use this dropper tool to select this color. And now I'm given these points so I can actually change it to a purple or a blue or bring it down to a green. I like that, I think that looks good. And before, if I didn't have this mask, for example, if we expanded this mask using the mask expansion, it would also affect the orange of the little present box. And that's why I just have the mask here so I can change this color. Because Lumetri still thinks this original color is orange, I can create dots here around the orange color and actually increase the saturation and now it's a brighter green. So this is just one way that you can change colors using masking tools inside of Premiere Pro. And now you don't have to worry about that headache rotation symbol anymore. It's now disabled until you finish the mask. All right, so the next update is super exciting. It has to do with AI auto enhancing your audio. And so you can edit your audio using text edits and text editing for video. But first, if this video is helping you out so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as subscribe. And now I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Envato Elements. Envato Elements is the most affordable option for creators to get unlimited stock video, music, sound effects, photos, graphics, fonts. I mean, the list goes on. It's just $16.50 per month and you get unlimited downloads to over 11 million assets. And you can use it in any type of video, in any number of videos that you want. There's no licensing issues. So if you're making a product and you wanna create a product mockup, you can download one of their templates there. Let's say you wanna add a VHS overlay or a film overlay on top of your footage, you can download it there. If you need text presets or transitions, Envato Elements has it. If you need a photo for a YouTube thumbnail, they have it. So this is how it works. Search for the item that you want. In this case, let's search for VHS. And let's say we wanna download this, just click download. And then from here, you can create a new project and you register it to that project. Then hit add and download. And bam, you're done. It's downloaded to your computer and now it's forever licensed for you to use in that project. So Envato Elements set you up with a 70% off your first month, which you can access just down below. And if you ever unsubscribe in the future, the items that you downloaded before are still covered for that project. So you don't have to worry about those getting out of date after you've downloaded. All right, now back to the updates. So the first AI tool is actually not inside of Premiere Pro. It's actually on the web and it's called Adobe Podcast and it's still in beta and you have to request access to begin using it. But essentially it's an audio tool where you can actually edit your audio through text. And as a part of that, if we scroll down here, you can see it says edit words, not waveforms. And I love that. That's exactly what it's doing. It'll take a transcript and then you can you know, cut and paste and move around the text. And it also has AI powered audio. So you can actually upload your audio and it will auto improve it. Let's go ahead and try it out. So I'm gonna click here and I'm going to upload a sample audio clip. So this is before. Whoa, that was crazy. So this is the before. I have a little bit of background noise from my LED light that's above me. And this is after. And I'm curious to see how this enhanced speech is going to make it sound better compared to the original. All right, interesting. It definitely made my voice a little bit deeper. There wasn't a whole lot of background noise. So I wish there was a slider here that you could like say how much of intensity you want the enhancement to go, especially if there's not a lot of background noise, just a light amount. But if you have really terrible audio, this can really improve it. This is actually the sample speech here. I'm in a conference room with the window open and it's pretty echoey in here too. Not the best place to record audio. Yet with 
enhanced speech, all of the background noise and echo is gone, as if I recorded this in a professional studio. Wow, that sounds really good. So I can imagine, especially if you're doing podcasts where one of your guests doesn't have the best audio, you can use this technology inside of the beta of Adobe Podcast. You don't have to upload it separately like this. Let me just show you the preview video and let's show you how it works. We can start recording. Here we go. Humans make noise. Living in New York City, these sounds surround me. There's a beauty to the sound of human presence. Sweet, I can stop that recording. It'll upload and transcribe everything we said. I can play back the beginning for you. Here we go. Humans make noise. I'm actually gonna delete that here we go. We don't want that in there. So that's the coolest part right there is you can say something and you can just highlight the text and delete it. This next part is really cool when he invites somebody in to the podcast to record with him. Hey, Caitlin. Hey, Sam. So earlier you told me you had a very unusual commute this morning. Can you tell me that story again? Yeah. So I was waiting for the Q train as usual when my AirPods died. Um, so I was forced to actually listen to my surroundings. And that's when I started to hear something really weird. Whoa, I want to hear the rest of that story. Whoa. <laughs> Basically, you can hear what they're doing here. The person that came in had really bad audio. It's very reverby. So what they're going to do here is show you how to apply that auto enhance, but inside the app. After finishing the recording and Caitlin leaving, Project Shasta uploaded and transcribed all of that audio. I'm going to clean it up a little bit, delete some unnecessary parts. So cool. So cool. I'm noticing that the audio could use some improvement. Caitlin is in a very different environment and our microphones sound very different from each other. So I can go to the filters over here on the right, and in here there is an enhanced speech filter. Yeah, so I was waiting for the Q train as usual when my AirPods died. And now I'll turn it on. Yeah, so I was waiting for the Q train as usual when my AirPods died. I mean, it sounds fantastic. I can't wait to get my hands on this to start testing it further, but certainly you watching this can also request access to start using this in your own podcast or even in your own videos. This technology is great. In talking about videos, there's actually text editing coming to Premiere Pro as well from the text panel. Let me quickly just show you what it's going to look like. So this is the beta version of Premiere Pro and you're going to go to the text panel. Now, just like before that I was showing you with the captions, you can transcribe your sequence. Go ahead and choose your transcription mode. Let's try the text-based editing recommended. In the beginning here, you can see, okay, are we rolling? Let's say we would want to delete that. You can click, highlight that and we can click on extract and it deletes it from the timeline. And you can see it's making cuts in my timeline. So this is the first iteration, right? I know I Justine made a video about Descript, which is its own app where you can actually do text editing, use a backslash to create a new cut. And my hope is we can have that same technology directly in Premiere Pro so we can really start to get rid of those filler words and just unnecessary pauses that take more time. This is just the beginning of text editing. So yeah, go download the beta right now, start testing it out, leave feedback for the team. You can go up here and you can actually click on provide feedback and you can request a feature or report a bug. And this is how the new tools are being built. And the next update has to do with more smoother selection of multiple tracks. So if you're not familiar with source patching, let me give you a little refresher here. If we select a clip from the project panel, you'll see that there is V1 turned on and A1 turned on. These are the source patching. So that means that both the video and the audio from our selected clip will appear in the timeline when we drag and drop it. But let's say that we accidentally turned off the V1. If we drag and drop this clip into the timeline, only the audio comes down. So you need to make sure that the V1 is selected. So as you're dragging and dropping clips into the timeline, you can choose which track you want it to go to. And you may want to select or deselect multiple tracks. Now you can press command and you can actually click and roll up to deselect these tracks, which is very useful tool. Another really cool shortcut is if you want to just insert a clip into a timeline, you can do that with just a simple keyboard shortcut. So for example, this drone shot, I can just select it from my project panel and press the comma key and bam, it's inside the timeline just like that. So it's an easy way to build your selects by using the shortcut. So if I want to overwrite that clip, I can press the up key to go back to the previous cut point, And then I can select a different clip and 
press the period key if I wanna overwrite that clip. So there's some really cool shortcuts that you can do. There's another really cool thing that you can do with copy and pasting to specific target tracks. And a target track is the one that you have selected. So let's say we wanna copy this clip later on down the timeline. Let's pretend that we have a really long timeline here. We scrub to the beginning, we press Command C or Control C to copy this clip. And now we wanna paste it on video track three. So we can press Command and deselect these two tracks and then move down the timeline here and you can paste it to this target track and you can actually set a custom keyboard shortcut. So if I press this key, boom, it's pasted on video track three because I targeted that track. You can search keyboard shortcuts for paste to target track and you can see that I chose the asterisk symbol on my number keypad as my shortcut. And you can do the same thing to paste insert to target track as well. So if you find that useful, go ahead and create that custom keyboard shortcut. It's gonna save you a lot of time. And the next updates are a little bit more technical, but they have to do with specific camera profile presets. You film with an RE camera, there's improved playback real-time performance of RE RAW. It uses what is called GPU debayering. And you might be like, well, what is debayering? How does it work? Simply put, it's basically translating the raw data to be displayed in an RGB format. You need to have the debayering on so it can easily process that and play it back. And here inside of my timeline, I have the sample clip from the RE website. It's from the Alexa 35 camera. So this is full resolution of RE RAW. I put the RE log C to Rec 709 LUT on here and you can see that it's plain smooth. There was zero frames dropped out of 291 and it was smooth as blood, blutter. Smooth as blood. <laughs> and it was smooth as butter. And the same debayering is also available for the red V-Raptor XL camera for 8K footage. So if you use those cameras and you edit with them, this is great news for you because it's gonna be smooth. And lastly, there's an update to collaborative projects. So now if you have Adobe Creative Cloud account, you can go to file and create a new team project on any plan that you're on. And you can actually invite somebody to edit on that same project who's outside of your account who has a different domain name. Before I couldn't invite my editor who had a different domain. So now I can invite them to edit on this project and actually the team project isn't stored anywhere on the machine. It's actually stored inside of the app itself. So you just go to open the team project and the benefit of it is that you can see who's editing in the project and it will have sequence locking. So if somebody's editing a current sequence, it'll lock it. And once the editor is done, they can click publish and those updates are available to another person that opens that project. So if you work with multiple people, it might be worth trying out team projects to see if it works better than your current workflow. And I put a link just down below if you'd like to check out more about team projects. So, I mean, clap to Adobe for listening to us and creating these new updates. Very, very exciting. So if you have any suggestions or you're excited about these updates, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and also leave a comment below. And I also wanna give a shout out to Epidemic Sound for providing the music and the sound effects for this video. I love their chill beats, electronic lo-fi, their alternative hip hop tracks. And if you're looking for some great background music, you can go to Epidemic Sound and search Premier Gal and you can find my playlist there. And I have a 50% off discount code that you can use just down below for your personal plans. So that covers YouTube and social media as well. All right, that's all for today's video. Happy holidays, everyone. And I will see you in 2023. Cheers. Bye. Woo!